Are you an only child? Uh, far from it. I am the oldest of nine. Now, when you say nine, is that nine with uh, with your mother or nine total with all the wives? Uh, 21. 20 total with all of them. One total with all of them. Hey, Caden? Yeah. Uh, what's up, dog? Uh, nothing much. Just hanging out, enjoying the stream. Um, Caden, uh, what is going on with you? What would you like to talk about today? Uh, well, I told this call screener, um, kind of wanted to tell you about my life. Um, I should think it's a little bit unique, uh, I guess. Please, please. <laughs> um, um, where to start? Uh, it's kind of always weird to just tell someone this, um. But yeah, so I guess I'll just cut straight to it. Um, so I am 25 years old. Um, at 18, I got kicked out of my parents' house uh, they, because I didn't want to, you know, believe that their beliefs. I guess. Well, it says um, here. Can I say? Can I tell? Can I say what the? Uh, can I say uh, what the you you told the call screener? Yeah, please. It says that you grew up in a polygamist household. Yeah. So does that mean that uh, you had many different people who who you referred to as mom or dad? <laughs> um, no, it's still just the you know one dad, the one mom. Um, it's and I I probably should have used a different word other than household it's uh it, it was an entire uh you know religion uh community um and uh my dad uh still to this day has uh, three wives um mm. and almost had a fourth mm. and when when you were growing up how many wives did he have uh well my mom was the first wife um which is kind of its own like you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The privilege status or, I symbol. Guess, you know, it's 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 status, you're, you're, yeah symbol. You you get extra privileges being the first. Yeah, but it's like one of those unspoken rules, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so sorry uh, to answer your question. Uh, my mom was the first, and I'm the oldest, uh, and. So growing up, I watched him, you know, marry the other two. Um, and the second wife he married when I was probably uh, six or seven, something like that, maybe younger. Um, and then the third wife when I was 12, I believe. Hmm. So, okay, so the first one when you were how old again? Uh, like five or six. Five or six, okay. Uh, and so he just kind of kept adding a new wife every few years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the fourth one failed, but yeah. So well, tell me, um, what was your, like, relationship like with these new wives? Because, you know, like, my parents got divorced... And my dad remarried, and that was like my stepmom. And I kind of like you know that's a, a that's a, an established sort of family dynamic. You know, you have your mom, and then uh, the stepmom is kind of a different relationship. But but this is different. This is not like a stepmom. This is like a I don't even know what you would refer to your relationship with this person as. Yeah. Um... It's, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. It's, uh, it was definitely really weird at first. I remember pretty distinctly when I was like, you know, when he started dating his second wife 
or courting, as they call it. Um, and, you know, she he started to go out with her and it would was really confusing to see my mom really sad and upset about it. Hmm. Um, and then like all of a sudden, you know, it, he, there was like this sort of, I guess you could call it an integration period into our existing family. You know, yeah. she yeah. started to come around for like dinners and, you know, the Sunday brunch and whatnot. Um, and then, you know, calling in, at random just to like talk to us and stuff. Um, she is very nice. And I should say that, um, I do have a good relationship and, you know, understanding with all of them now, but, um, hmm. yeah, pretty, pretty weird at first. Um, hmm. and then after he married the second, um, I was definitely, you know, I didn't have words for it at the time, but as from what I've realized now is I was just, really confused as to why my dad was marrying another another woman and was going to have you know kids with them yeah that i would technically be my brothers and it just you know growing up and kind of just seeing the world around me it just it didn't really line up and so i was just maybe naturally acting out against that hmm you said that your you would kind of see your mom be uh, upset when your dad started dating a second wife. Um, so your mom was she like? Because I guess I guess when I'm imagining this like polygamist community, I am imagining that your mom and dad kind of go into it both knowing. Uh, what they're getting into and that your mom I, gu I guess I would imagine that your mom would like embrace it if it's like part of a religion that she's like on board with but it, it sounds like that is not the case uh, uh, yeah agreed agreed and it's um, that's uh, kind of a phase that I went through as well um, or thought process um, when I a little bit after he married um, his third wife, um, which that one my mom took the hardest, um, and that's that's another thing I could dive into. But to, to answer your question, um, it was a uh, sorry. I'm trying to put put together the words. Um, I don't talk about this too much to people. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I I definitely had that sort of thought process where it's like, well, you you chose this, you know, like mm. um, you like why are you? Uh, it, it was almost like I'm kind of sick of seeing all this, you know, sad and hurt, and it kind of totally. inadvertently being taken taken out on us as uh, on her kids. Yeah, um, yeah, her own, you know. Yeah. I can understand that feeling. Did you, did you feel like she was taking it out on you guys? I'm in in ways. I mean, she definitely tried her hardest, but you know, me being an adult now and looking back on it, like yeah. I definitely have a lot more empathy towards her for it. Mm -hmm. You know, because she was born into it, grew up and raised, and you know, taught mm -hmm. that this mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. this is what God wanted from her and whatnot. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right. So it's it's less of like a. Right, because I guess at first glance, you know, you could be like, well, you know, I don't know why you're so upset about your husband marrying other people. You chose to do this, but, you know, at a at a closer look, you're like, well, shit, she was kind of indoctrinated into this uh, uh, whole thing. Sounds like against, exactly. you know, her, her will or, or, or against really knowing any better, being taught any better as a as a kid. And, I, I you know, I, that definitely adds a much greater, you know, level of empathy to the situation. Um, why did her, why did the third wife in particular get to her more than, than the second one? Um, at that point, I believe she was in her thirties. Um, and this third wife had just turned 19 when they got married, if I'm not mistaken. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's uh, as best as we can all tell. It's and when I say we, it's my direct siblings. Um, is that it was simply that kind of like, you know, she's a lot younger and probably considered prettier and mm-hmm. that kind of you know probably in and in, in, in any normal relationship where you know an older man maybe goes and cheats on on his wife with a much younger prettier woman right right sort of scenario a There's lot of like you know it. comparing herself to the new wife yeah hmm are you an only child uh, far from it. I am the oldest of nine, including me. The oldest of nine. Now, when you say nine, is that nine with uh, with your mother or nine total with all the wives? Uh, nine total with my mother, uh, with all of the wives and my half-siblings, but I still like to consider them my full siblings in a weird way Mm -hmm. i don't know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i grew up i grew up weird but uh uh 21 21 total with all of them them. and you consider them all to be you know you that you don't you don't make any sort of distinction you you consider all of them your brothers yeah they're my family Mm -hmm. yeah Mm. wow I, i as i've grown over the years i've just kind of adopted or come to terms with where I've came from and that yeah. how kind of like what they're going through and that, you know, they didn't choose it either. And they're going through a lot of the same stuff and maybe their own stuff. That's a lot harder. So if it, it's something that, you know, they were brought in by the same guy and beliefs. So as I was, so I guess that makes us family. So, Hmm. And do all of them? A lot of other do do all of them, or most of them, or but you know, have the same view of everything that you do, or are some of them also kind of drinking the Kool Aid and, and staying in the uh, in the cult? Um, a lot of the younger ones are definitely drinking the Kool Aid. Um, my uh, myself and I guess mainly the older ones um, are drifting away from it. Um, currently there's only three of us, um, three including myself that have uh, left, I guess. Mm-hmm. And you said you left when you were 18. Yeah. Well, actually let's well, here you got kicked out when you were 18. Yeah, um, it was a, it was actually something that I saw coming. Um, he was my dad was like warning me in mm-hmm. his own way, um, but then you know I think it was the day after my birthday that we went out into the the garden and uh, and he brought me alone, which was a little bit different. Usually he would take all the kids out, um, mm-hmm. but anyways, uh, it took me out alone and basically without even looking at me and just while he's working, just saying, if you're not going to, um, you know, if you're not going to stay here, go to church and at least try and share the same beliefs as I do. And the ones I try and teach to my kids, then I don't want you here. And mm-hmm. so, uh, I had a month and then I found a place and got out. And this was seven years ago. Yeah. Or a little. I'm my birthday's actually coming up uh, this Sunday, so. Oh, happy birthday, man! Probably closer to eight. Closer to eight. Wow. Okay. So, all right. So you have about twenty-one brothers and sisters total. Um, I'm all right. So now I'm kind of curious about uh, jumping ahead to contemporary times about what your relationship is like with all these people that were in your life growing up. Um, Let's start with your dad. What is your relationship like with him now? Um, It's a lot better. 
um, than it used to be. Um, mm. uh, he and I, growing up, uh, butted heads quite a bit. Um, and, you know, me, he, he, he almost took the stance of, like, he didn't kick me out. And I think he kind of still believes that to this day, that he was mm. just in his own way, giving me like a stern warning, but that <laughs> uh, comes off maybe a little bit different to someone in that mm -hmm. situation. Um, so yeah, uh, he and I definitely ha hashed it out a couple times after that, um, kind of laid everything out on the table. And uh, so I think we, I think it's safe to say we have a pretty good understanding now. Was there a period of time, like, right after uh, you left where you guys just weren't speaking to each other? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I think I didn't speak to him. Well, actually, I take that back. Um, I should say that uh, growing up in there, uh, the majority of, like, the the workforce labor in the community is like uh, construction jobs uh, mm. or like blue collar jobs, essentially handyman, a technician, uh, electrical uh, technician, stuff like that. Um, and so I was actually still working with him um, every day after I got kicked out. Oh, um, really? And I, yeah. Um, so uh, for a pretty long time, I, you know, it was just like, you know, yes and no's uh to answer his questions mm. and whatever i had to essentially and he mm. kind of did the same you know um mm. just almost acted like the both of us weren't there but there were a couple times those times that we hashed out i mentioned a couple times were on the job and the in front of some people and but yeah mm, so he you still had to work with him even after you sort of like left the I guess I guess commune you would call it. Yeah. Um okay, but you said that your relationship with him now is better. How often do you see him now? Um maybe once a month or about a once or sorry, one or two months. Every one or two okay. months. Um well, I'm glad to hear that things are going better with him. Uh, how many wives is he up to now? <laughs> uh, still the three. Um, still the three. He did try to get a fourth, I'd say, three years ago now. He um, tried. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, what, how, how did he fail? That didn't... Um, I don't know if it was necessarily him, which is actually a surprise to all of us. Um it was more so the the girl that he was um, after. Uh, she w had a certain. Uh, uh, she almost came into the. Let me backtrack a little bit. That, that courtship so, that I mentioned uh, with that uh, second wife, um, yeah. you know, that happened also with the third and same here. And so she started to, when she started to come over. She almost came in with this. Uh, persona of i i know what i'm doing i and know and i'm kind of already in it and so she was almost acting like a mom to the rest of the kids and hmm. and so like you know I, I it was really interesting to me because i didn't even have to i was just you know kind of being pleasant to her and like oh well here comes another um and but just watching the little kids just kind of react naturally to that and then it just kind of fell apart um so i got i got a question for you I, when was when was this fourth wife attempted to when, when was he courting this fourth wife uh about three years ago now was she uh, was she like your age when he was courting her <laughs> she was uh i think she was only a couple of years older than I. Um, mm. So, 
tell me now what your relationship is like uh, with your mom and with uh, wife two and three. Uh, with my mom, it's, uh, you know, up and down still, um, which is another story. But the second and third, um, I actually do have a, a pretty good relationship with the second wife. Um, mm. She is honestly a sweetheart. Um, and she has gone through a lot of her own struggles um, growing up there and in with our family. Um, our family is a whole mess in, in and of itself in the community. <laughs> sure. Um, but the uh, third wife, definitely things have gotten better with her. Um, but it's still kind of like a, I don't know, like, yeah, we're, we're, we're friends, we, we're acquaintances, but it's almost like, almost like we have to be kind of mm. relationship. Mm. Do, you, do you still work with them? Uh, no, I uh, was pretty much my goal ever since I got kicked out, um, or even younger than than that, um, or before is a better way to say. It. I was my goal to get out of that industry and you know not work with them, um, and I was always really into tech, so uh, I slowly got into that. Um, after I got out, I worked at a uh, call center for a while, uh, about two years, almost two years. Um, and then after that, I went to school for uh, full stack software development and now nice. I'm a software engineer. Oh, that's awesome, man. I'm glad to hear that you were able to, I've, I, we've talked to people on the stream before who like have escaped from cults or just generally like you know weird sort of family oh, yeah. situations uh and yeah, I'm, al I'm always super impressed by those callers because a, a, a lot of them have stories you know similar to yours where like they are in some position where like they're financially reliant on these people that are like you know uh just, you know they're just sort of financially reliant on this like weird community that they came from but then they you know, branch off from that, and and you know, as as you did, uh, you know, make a life uh, of your of your own, which is really hard. I'm sure that a lot of people who uh, you know grew up in your community totally did not do that, and just uh, you know, squeezed every last drop of the Kool Aid into their mouths, and uh, you know, to this day are are still there. Oh yeah, absolutely, and and thank you for saying that too. Um, yeah, it's it, it is actually sad to see some of the friends that I grew up with who uh, who may like maybe they haven't said it directly, but it kind of like what you said, it's almost like you can see them see it in their eyes that they don't see any other way for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, uh, I've been listening to your podcast for a while now, and uh, that's uh. I, I hope this makes sense, but that that's it, it's kind of reassured me of that, you know that that I that it's okay to not know where where you need to go or what to do yeah. sort of situation, yeah. um, but maybe just to trust that you are unhappy or maybe you're not you don't feel comfortable or you don't feel like you along or even better that there's something wrong with the situation you're in mm -hmm. um, and you just need to trust that you know that and that you need to act on getting away from that feeling yeah and it's really hard to so. do that with uh because uh, you kind of have to make that decision like not only not only do you have to trust yourself you have to actively ignore what other people are telling you I'm sure. I'm sure that like you, right. know, you have other like your like your friends and you know uh, uh, your family are like actively telling you do not do this, but you have to you have to go against that to find your own thing, and that's like that's super hard. I mean, dude, I, you know, in my own life, I'm I'm very indecisive about things, and I'm always like when I'm about to make some sort of big life decision or do anything, I'm always asking everybody around me what they think, and you know. 
uh, uh, it's 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 hard to uh, to be able to trust yourself and just be like, I know what is right to do for me, and uh, I'm just gonna do it. I don't really care what anyone else thinks. I I, I have this conviction, and so yeah, man. I mean, that I'm 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 incredibly impressed by uh, how you're able to to form your own life out of that. Um, Thank you. I want to ask you before we we go because what is your relationship like with the 21 siblings um it, it, it's really good um i i mean i should say that uh one of my siblings i've had my own issues with them uh and her with me um but it's actually we we actually went and talked uh probably two weeks ago um kind of hash things out in, in, in a nice way uh, definitely not the way me and my dad did <laughs> but uh you know just kind of buried the hatchet so to speak um but the rest of them really good um and you know i just want to make sure that they're uh kind of given that same opportunity um in a sense and if and i don't want to go up to them directly in defiance of you know my parents and everything that they've learned and been taught so far and be like you need to get out of here you know to to the really young six five four-year-olds running around you know right um, it's hard it i feel like it, it must be hard for you to like know your I, I guess boundaries you could say is the word of like exactly. you know you have you have you have your six yeah. year old cousin and it's like you know it wh- what is my place what is my responsibility where do I lie and like how much information I should give to uh, to this to you know to my to my brothers and sisters about like hey you know you don't have to follow what our parents are saying you know but it, it's hard because it's like right. you know should i should i intervene should i not intervene I, I i don't know i can understand why that's a struggle oh yeah for sure um it's a, uh, it's something that i think about quite often and i'm always wondering what ways i can you know kind of I don't have the words for it. I obviously still have a lot of thinking to do on that, but I think we're kind of on the same page. Is there a reason why you, you said that you don't talk about this stuff a lot and we've been talking about it for about a half hour. Uh, Do you feel like there's a reason why you don't talk about this stuff with other people? Um, I guess it's, um, I guess it's maybe just that uh, that insecurity uh, sure. that I have about it of uh, you know this strange or dynamic that my life has been and uh, it I, of the people that I have told you know like it's uh, it either does one of two things I they become extremely interested in my story or you know that aspect of me and it's almost like you know after a while we might become like good friends and whatnot and i do have some of those people thankfully in my life but a lot of the time it's more just like a the the shock and awe effect Mm -hmm. of like well that actually happened to you and it's just like um and then that's almost all you are to them, right? I get, I get, I get the sense just now that you, that you, you, you know, don't want to be, de- you don't want to be defined by this because you, wor- because that's the thing. You worked really hard, as we were talking about, to uh, like t- t- not drink the Kool Aid, to go and like build your own life outside of this. And I can sell, I can, I can sort of see why you wouldn't want to, you know, tell a lot of people about this and and you know, kind of revert back to being defined by this thing that you worked so hard to escape. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I remember, um, shortly after I, uh, moved out that I 
I kind of just, uh, you know, uh, flung it out there. Um, almost when people didn't ask and I kind of noticed, you know, those reactions that I mentioned and it's, mm -hmm. and I was just kind of had that realization like, Oh wow, this isn't what I thought it was. And it's, um, you know, or people don't react maybe the way I thought I would. I, it was almost like I was doing it for attention. Maybe, mm -hmm. um, I was, I'm still, am very antisocial, but my socials, I would kind of contribute that to the, my lack of social skills that I'm still trying to, uh, level up, <laughs> so to speak. Um, but yeah, now that I've kind of seen that, like it's, um, I like to make a, a connection or relationship first with a person, you know, rather than mm. do a, you know, here, here's this interesting thing about me. Um, right. And, uh, you want to sort of sit, keep it under wraps. Oh, exactly. go ahead. Sorry. And I know this. Yeah, sorry. I don't know. I'm being a bit of a hypocrite because I did quite literally tell the call screener, uh, <laughs> you know, hey, I grew up in a polygamous household uh, I, and I guess maybe just to defend myself, I probably don't need to, but uh, it's uh, I've been wanting to call on the show for a while and just talk well, to you and maybe well, like get. Oh, sorry. Go sorry, ahead. go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. I, I, I want to let you finish. <laughs> no, I, but um, to be completely honest, it, it's, uh, you know, I guess I wanted to kind of at least talk to someone outside of where I kind of live in that sense, like someone with a much different perspective than a lot of the people in the surrounding area that I live in. And if I were to really simmer down why, um, I kind of wanted to talk to you because like even some of the therapists that I've gone and seen, um, I haven't even told them, uh, Hmm. You know, where I grew up, it's only two of them that I've, two therapists I've seen that I've told that. Um, and so, yeah, uh, kind of lost where we were going. Sorry. Well, well, uh, no, well, Kate, I, I wanted to ask you, you know, sort of to like put a cap on this. Like mm -hmm. what, you know, I, I, I like I said, I, I, I totally understand why you don't want to be defined by this thing that you worked really hard to, to escape from. And like, as we're, you know, you've told all the people listening to this uh, about your story and we appreciate uh, uh, your vulnerability in doing so. And like, as, as a wrap up, like what should we know about you as a person? How do you want to be seen? What would you like for yourself to be known as to people? completely outside of having nothing to do with your past. What sort of portrait would you like to paint that has nothing to do with that? Um, maybe just, you know, uh, it, I hope this makes sense, but maybe just Please. me, like, uh, you know, like a 26 year old, uh guy that likes programming and playing games and you know just like and if that's that's like one small niche or of or maybe aspect of myself like because i i know it's i think you've said it before but like uh, in one of your p past streams that like you know your pat where you grow up or what where you came from doesn't define you you know um and it's uh i guess i just want to if i were to say just for myself i just want to be you know completely honest with how i express myself how i um with my wants desires and you know uh stuff like that Caden, uh, is there anything you want to say to, to the people of the computer before we go? Um, 
、uh, simplicity is complex.、Um, mm. You are the, the simplicity you are desiring or wanting will probably require a lot of work and effort behind it to make it happen. And try and take it in small steps. Break it down as small as you can. Digest what you can, and you'll get there. Caden, man, thank you for、uh, sharing your story with us, and、um, good luck to you in the future with、uh, everything you're doing. It sounds like you've built a nice life for yourself. Thank you. I appreciate that. And same to you, Lyle. Love the stream. Keep doing what you're doing. I'll be listening. I'll be watching. Thank you, Caden. Have a good one. Bye bye. Let's unpack that. Caden, Caden, Caden.、Uh, I've been using this phrase, I meant what I said. I've been saying that after a lot of calls lately.、Um, but man, I meant what I said to Caden. It is a, uh, 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 a tough, tough、uh, gig growing up in a community like that. And、um, it's hard to, when you've been told all this information about the world and how it works, it is hard to、uh, reject all of it. And decide to form your own thing. That's why, again, we've, we, I think we've taken a, a sort of a call like this before.、Uh, and, and I think I said a similar thing.、Uh, I'm, I'm super impressed with Caden and how he was able to do that.、Um, I also understand why he doesn't want it to define him because、uh, he clearly has a lot of other things going on in his life. And, you know, he's only, you know, still, he's still a young man with a desire for other. Experiences and people and life stuff to fill his soul. And、uh, it was wonderful of him to share that all with us. And、uh, yeah, I, I, I could tell he doesn't really talk about this that often because he seemed a little bit nervous to, to talk to us about it. But I'm glad we got it out of him because it was very, very interesting to hear his perspective on all of this. Do I have anything else to say? That was a lot. That might have been the longest call I've, I've taken on this.、Uh, not, not in all of history, but in a while. Definitely the longest call I've taken in a while. That was a dense one. It, 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 sometimes people come in with like a, a, just a, you know, some, some premise to themselves, and it just keeps getting、uh, more and more interesting. And there's more and more relationship dynamics that I want to explore, like his, you know, how he has 21. Siblings, like, what, what's the deal with that? What are those holiday parties like? What are those family reunions like? Do we have to rent out a whole friggin' arena? What's going on with that? And then how he, how he maintains these, this relationship, this weird, hard to define relationship between, you know, the, the, two, the two other wives. I find that super interesting. Thank you for sharing, Caden. Hello? Hello. Hi. How's it going? It's going good. It's fine、uh, morning. I, I forget what day is today. Do you know what day today is? Unfortunately, I do.、Um, it's Friday. Why do you say, unfortunately, you know the day? Do you wish to not know the day? It would be nice not to know kind of what. Calendar day we're on, and just kind of be like, oh man, today felt like a Friday, but it's Sunday. I was in such a great mood, you know? Yeah, it's no, it's so interesting you say that because I feel like、uh, at our best, we are forgetting what time it is. You know, in a sense, we're, we're almost like、uh, servants of the calendar of the time, you know, what we do. Is we, like we have to ask permission from the calendar to be able to do stuff. Like, oh, you can't 
go out. It's a Tuesday night or you can't uh, eat breakfast. It's 11 p.m. Like, why are our actions uh, so heavily dictated by the calendar and by the time? Wouldn't we be more free if we just walked around and did things with no concern over the position of the sun? Exactly. That's that's well put. I think our lives would be a whole lot better and I think we'd be a lot more comfortable <laughs> with our actions that we take. Hmm. Okay, so Matt. Matt, that's your name? That is my name. Matt, if you didn't know what time it was, do you know what time? I know you, you know what day it is, but do you know what time it is? Don't look if you don't know. I don't know what time it is. I don't okay, have you don't know right what time it is. So if you had the ability to never know what time it was or what day it was, what would you do with that with that ignorance? <clears throat> That's a good question. I'd probably I would say I'd be asleep, but that'd probably be a lie because I think my circadian rhythm is already like set so my body just naturally wakes up early mm. and it, it i could be you know pretty drunk or just tired and out just up for no reason and crash out at maybe like 3 a.m mm. and my body will just naturally be up by 7 7 30 the mm. latest it doesn't matter mm. what the circumstances is i can just be totally tired but it's there, and then I'm up. Hmm. So I would say in bed. But more than likely, not working. Not working. What do you do for work currently? I work for a bank. You work for a bank. What do you do for this bank? Uh, I deal with loans. You work for a bank and you deal oh. with loans. I'm not trying to give out too much information just because I may or may not be on the clock. Mm. But I work for a bank with loans. Okay. All right. So uh, you work for a bank and you deal with loans. And you're not on the clock right now, but let's say you were on the clock right now and you were taking a phone call, perhaps with a gecko. What, uh, what, like, room in the bank would you be in where you can take a, a phone call such as, such as this, were you to take one? Probably the utility closet. Okay. So were you on a phone call with a gecko right now, you would be currently at this moment in the utility closet. That is correct. Okay. How big is this utility closet? Uh, not very big. I want to say maybe three by four at most. And are you, or were you on a phone call with a gecko? Would you be sitting in a chair or lying on the floor? If I were, I would hopefully be sitting on something. I couldn't guarantee it's a chair. Matt? Yes. What are you sitting on right now? It is a box. A box of cleaner. A box of cleaners. And what are you looking at right now? Like, what's in front of your face? Um, There is some um, loose paper in boxes. And it's pretty much just like copy paper. Mm -hmm. There's now, some disinfectant. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a it's a it's a closet that has utilities that has cleaning supplies that has all the things that you would you would need in a utility closet. That is correct. Now, how often do you use this space as a escape from your job? 
Uh, I want to say pretty often there's some micro transactions that take place if I have an important call such as this. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. So if you get a way to take it. So if you have a business related call, will you take it in the utility closet or will you just take it in the office? I wish I could, but no, it'd be more personal or leisure. Now, have you ever been walked in on taking a call in the utility closet? I have. And what was that experience like? Uh, well, it's pretty awkward at first, but, you know, once people realize that I'm just trying to get like a quiet room and I kind of just put my finger up for a second, they realize that I can mute it and then I just explain the situation. Hey, I'm Mm -hmm. on a call. Obviously, it's personal. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Um, When you were walked in on in the utility closet taking a call, were you walked in on by a boss or by one of your coworkers? A coworker. Hmm. See, here's what I think is the dangers of uh, getting walked in on. Here's what I think is the worst part about getting walked in on and uh, taking the call in the utility closet is that obviously, you know, if it's your boss, they're going to be upset with you. But if it's your coworker, your coworker is going to see you taking a personal call in the utility closet and then they are going to get the idea like oh shit i should start taking my personal calls in the utility closet and then next thing you know a call is coming in from you know your wife or whatever it is and you're like all right time to go to the utility closet and you open it and there's your co-worker taking a nap and now all of a sudden utility closet time becomes a scarce resource this is a well-kept this is a this is this needs to be a, a, a well kept secret of yours. Or else there's gonna be long wait times to get into that utility closet. Exactly. And I really hope that nobody kind of has the goal to to take my utility closet, because that would be pretty disappointing. Hmm. But even so when I leave I'll kind of put everything back in place to where it's not, I don't want to say roomy, but as comfortable as it can be. So you want to kind of, uh, Oh, you're cutting out a little bit. There's not very good reception in the utility closet, but, uh, Matt, are you still there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Matt, listen, before we go, you know, is there anything that you would want to do besides be at the bank working with loans? I'm curious kind of what your your dream is, what you desire in life outside of uh, the bank. It's a great question. And there's two things that I would do, and, and maybe they could be interchangeable, but I've always wanted to be a writer and always wanted to be a therapist so Mm. who knows Hmm. well i feel like should you want to start producing more written work you have a a nice place to do so right there in that utility closet agreed agreed lots of paper handy as well anything you want to say to the people at the computer before we go matt uh, yeah. You guys rock. Just be nice, guys. Stop being idiots. Thank you for calling, Matt. Yeah. Take care. I like that guy. He, uh, he had a cool, calm demeanor to him. And he said he wanted to be a writer. And I meant what I said to him. That he has a nice place to pursue that career in that utility closet because there's something about a very claustrophobic environment that sparks emotions that 
Matt can use to transmute into. I, I, I'm not a writer. I'm not a poet, so I can't. I, I have no real examples of this. But I do feel like if Matt were looking for a, a place to sort of be his muse, the utility closet is not a bad idea because it's a little bit depressing sitting in there. And from that depression, there are beautiful sonnets to be mined. But I like Matt. And I hope his, his utility closet stays safe from his co-workers. I hope his co-workers find their own space. Maybe a bathroom stall that speaks to them. Maybe the vault. That's where I would go to take personal calls if I worked at a bank. Let's talk to Patty. Hello, Patty. Oh, hey, man. Uh, Patty, where are you? It sounds like you're in, in a whole place. Yeah, I'm at home, but my wife is here, and she just said, Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and she just laughed. It sounds like you, uh, you're painting a very idyllic picture of your life. I can, I, I, I'm imagining your house, and I'm imagining there's lots of windows with sun pouring in, and plants, and a dog, and nice carpet and stuff. Is that, is that <laughs> accurate? Is that where you live? All right, all right, all right, all right. You mostly, I think you actually hit a dead on 50% because we have a cat, and we hate carpet. Hmm. <laughs> well, it says here that you are calling me from the Netherlands. I am calling you from the Netherlands, Lyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so did you did you move there or were you born there? Actually, my wife and I were both born in the United States. We moved here um, June 2020, three months after the, well, four, I don't know, however many months that is after you want to call when the pandemic started. We moved over here because my wife is actually just finishing up a master's in painting. Hmm. And is she now uh, do painting, like as her career? I mean, she's always done it since I've known her, you know, but she also is an artist of so many different, like, mediums. You know, she's made sculptures and installations, and she draws, and she's done a charcoal piece of my eyeball. A charcoal piece of your eyeball? Do you have an interesting yeah, looking she did eyeball? Uh, to her, I think. <laughs> I hope so. We're married. I like okay, so, so you moved in June of 2020 from the U.S. to the mm -hmm. Netherlands. Why mm -hmm. the Netherlands? And why, yep. why did she... And I know you said because your wife was finishing up a master's, but why did she decide to go to the Netherlands to do that? I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, we, we spent actually some years, we've been together a long time, and we spent some years looking at different grad schools for her in uh, various countries in the EU. And then, you know, where we are now, the school here is just so awesome. And like the feeling in the town and at the school and with the staff was just right on. So then we planned and saved and budgeted you know it googled how do you move to another country and stuff and uh mm. for two years um and then the pandemic happened and we were like are we still going yes mm. man so you kind of escaped all of the craziness that was going on in the, in the u.s at that time you know that actually is a really good point that you make because like my wife just said coincidentally it's true like Living where we were, too, a lot of what was going on was obviously right in front of our experience. And then coming here to the Netherlands, you know, and going through the pandemic was a different experience. But then watching sort of like the political and the, the street situations back home, that was like, right. that was devastating, honestly. Right, right. Um, what was the sort of tone? Because, I mean, over here, 2020 was just, it was just fucking nuts, like every single day there was something crazy happening or, you know, uh, oh, no. I mean, it was it was just nuts. What, what, what was the sort of uh, and like the tensions just felt really high and everyone, you know, was 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 definitely under a lot of stress. Did uh, 
Did the vibe in the Netherlands feel, you know, any different? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, there are so many levels to that, too. I think you have, like, how the government looks at it. How does the average person look at it? And then you look amongst the group of, the, of people, let's say the average person that I just mentioned. There's so many different um, places that people come from and beliefs. And so, and, and then as a whole, it was just different. Um, funny enough, like, when we got to where we are now, specifically, um, there was like a very, very, like a weirdly low uh, case no, amount. My wife actually mm. is right with me. And is it okay if she chimes in a little bit? Yeah, let me talk to her. Sure, she's right here. Yo, hey, hi. Dude, hi, Lyle. You're nice and close. Uh, hello, what's your name? Uh, Daltonea. Daltonea? Uh huh. What do your friends call you? Dulcinea. Dulcinea. Um, so you just finished up. You just finished up a uh, master's in painting. I'm about to finish it. I'm in like. She's in hell right now. Yeah, that's, that's a way to put it. Yeah, I'm. I'm. It'll, I'll be finished at the end of June. So here's the thing that is interesting to me about getting an MFA in painting is like, do you get a grade? Because this is like. Art, it's subjective, right? So how do you get, like, how do they grade on your, your paintings? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. Um, well, Dutch grading is very different from American grading. It's not, like, A through F. It's 1 through 10. Or, ten. I guess, 10 would be the highest, which is, like, almost impossible to achieve. Anyway, but how do they grade you? I, I think it's really about, like, the professors really get to know what it is you're trying to achieve as an artist and they grade based off of how successful you were in that so it's not so much like how much mm. do i like this painting it's more like did dulcinea achieve what she was trying to achieve with this work mm. Mm. so you both moved to the netherlands and, and you know it says here in the call screening thing that um you guys find the netherlands just in general to be a more tranquil place to live than the U.S. and I'm kind of curious. While I have you guys here, uh, what you would say are are some of the key differences uh, between living in the two places? Yeah, it's a lot. The first immediate sensory experience I had of it, I remember moving here and like going out in general volume of life just being quieter. That's like, actually a really nice point. There are a lot fewer cars. I think, and I don't want to speak for the entirety of the Netherlands, because again, I think where we live is like, I would call it maybe a small city. Mm -hmm. But there are yeah. actually, a, I mean, obviously, like, a major city in America, the amount of cars is way, way less. less. And the cars are quieter because they're mostly, I mean, there's more electric. Car. Mostly bikes, you know. Yeah. So, well, yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. I know that in yeah, uh, uh, I went to Amsterdam, and over there, it's like everyone's on a bicycle, which is uh, pretty sweet because, like, you go to New York City, and everybody is honking their horns mm -hmm. and all the time. But uh, yeah. uh, the the beautiful thing is because of the bikes, everyone over there, instead of hearing horn honks, you hear little bell chimes. Exactly. That's right. But here's the thing, though. That little bell chime oh, still means get the fuck out the way. Mm -hmm. it but it's such a polite way of saying get the fuck out of the way. It's so much better than the... That's yeah. true. That's true. But, I mean, there's other differences, too. Like, Dutch people are a lot more direct than American, especially a lot more direct yes. than West Coast. We're from Seattle. And, like... I would say Dutch people are direct in a different way than like New Yorkers are. Like, because mm. my, my dad's family's from the East Coast, I'm very familiar with that energy too. And um, it's different. It's less like aggressive in the directness, you know, the way East Coast can kind of be. And like, it's just more like, here's the point. There's no emotion attached. There it is. There's not a lot of like, uh, uh, passive aggressive or like no. talking no. behind your back or no. you, feedback is such a thing here like even at work you know you give your direct feedback at a good company let's let's say yeah and uh it's normal 
it's relieving though because you're not wondering you know in seattle you're always wondering what someone really thinks and it's mm. experience that. yeah i don't wonder that at all. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's awesome. I, I like I said, I went to I went to the Netherlands a while ago, and I, I it's funny to hear you guys talk about the Dutch directness because I I um, uh, experienced that and was talking to people there about that, and they were like, yeah, the Dutch people they're way more direct. Um, and you know, I've always looked at the Netherlands as like if I had to like nuke my life in America and start somewhere new, that's one of the places on my list where I would go to just start a new life in a foreign country. Okay, well, attention Lyle and all Americans in the chat, and I'm sorry, everyone in the Netherlands, but you, there's a really nice, there's so many really nice agreements uh, between the Netherlands and the United States, and if you can get hired from abroad, from abroad, not only can you get a work visa as an American citizen, but you also get 30% of your gross income untaxed, and there are the income minimum for that. Yeah. yeah. So let's be clear. There are there are there's a list of companies. There are rules about let's say how much the company has to pay you for a salary. Which, by the way, it's not bad depending on where you live in the Netherlands. Again, big city, still pretty expensive. But so it's not that you can get any job. There are there is a list of companies there. Let's say might be like I don't even know. I can't speak to like qualifications. What do you? By the way, what do you? What do you I do? I, feel, I know your. I know your. Your. Your wife is a painter, but we. I. We never got into what you do. <laughs> um, I am a professional presenter and event uh, host. A professional presenter and event. Oh, what do you? What do you present? Oh God, dude! You know, I mean, if you want it, if you got it. I'll present it. I'm presenting the fact that I have a I fucking lost my voice this morning right now. Tell me, no, tell me, I, tell I, me the I, last, I, tell me the last thing you presented. What's the last thing somebody gave you yeah, money no to problem. present? <laughs> That's actually a really ironic way of asking me that, Lyle, but I won't say why. Um, yeah, well, it was not too long ago. There was actually a series of I don't want to get too specific. But honestly, probably if anyone's listening, they'll know what I'm talking about. Um, I did a series of like pieces of online content um, that were a set of, let's say, like marketing campaign videos for a tech company that I was working for. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like you guys got a good thing going. Dude, you said it at the beginning of this call. You were like, Oh, Patty, you're painting a picture of an idyllic life. I have to admit, the 50% you got wrong was my dog and my uh, carpet. But the 50% you got right was this amazing life we have here, this amazing life I have with my wife that we have together with our cat in this beautiful country. Like, we are we are really lucky. And our Dutch friend. And our Dutch friend who's with us as well, who's been hanging out know, this whole time. No, uh, who's your Dutch friend? Uh... She's right here. I, I, Lola, she's amazing. Yeah. Uh, let's 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 end this call by talking to Lola. Is uh, is she willing to talk on the phone? Okay, if she comes, if she comes. Hello, this is Lola. How are you doing, Lola? I'm doing well. I'm uh, always enjoying uh, the company of my uh, great American friends here. Ah, oh, did they? They didn't tell you to say that, did they? Not at all. <laughs> how did you how did you meet them? That's very interesting. Uh, actually, Dulcinea, she uh, just found me on Instagram when she when they just had moved here. And of course, like you don't know anyone when you move to another continent. So mm. she was just like looking around like a location tag here. The re- really great tips when you were like really? just moving abroad. And she saw my profile and sent me a just. A nice DM, and and when I read her message, I was like, "Yes, you're my friend. I can tell." And like now we're besties. <laughs> really? Yeah. She just went on the location tab on Instagram, saw your face, was like, "I want to be friends with this person," and just sent you a message, complete yep. stranger out of the blue, and you were like, "Hell yeah!" And now you guys are friends. Yep. 
of course, it was a nice message. Like, and like the way that she phrased everything, I was like, oh my God, you're exactly my kind of person. Our wow. whole friendship has been just so kismet. It really has. Yep. And my, my friendship with Patty too, you know, like, of course, they're two peas in a pod, so you kind of get a package deal here. <laughs> That's amazing that that, that that just happened so, like, serendipitously. Mm-hmm. Have you yeah, made a lot of friends like that in these sort of indirect ways? Me? Yeah, you. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I think I actually I do think so. You know, I I always like to be very intuitive with these things, and well, so did Dilson Am, and. You know, normally I would be the person to make such a DM, you know? I was like, oh my God, like, mm. a, a person like me. <laughs> mm. Mm. So you saw her sort of have the courage to reach out to you, and you were like, oh, I'm this kind of person too. You know, let's be friends. Yep. Mm. Mm-hmm. Have you been to the, to the, you said your name is Lola? Yeah. Uh, have you been to the U.S., Lola? I have not, no. Because mm. I was going to ask, um, you know, what what do you think is uh, are, are are sort of the superior parts of uh, living in the Netherlands uh, that that you perceive over living in the U.S. Um, phew. there's many things. Uh, I think the, the government. <laughs> <laughs> to be really honest with you. Hmm. I like the uh, the Dutch like directness. The direct- Is that what you're about to say? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I, I, I love being direct. <laughs> it's, it's just true, you know. Like I don't like it when people are passive aggressive with me, you know, because it's just in my eyes and in many other Dutch people's eyes disrespectful, you mm. know. Like be honest. Hmm. So, have you ever had a time where you had to be honest with somebody and it was difficult for you? Of course, it's still difficult, but there's there is there's a line like that you can be honest and still be polite. You know, it may not be pleasant all the time, but there's no need to be disrespectful or rude. You know, that's something different. I love that, man. I love you guys' whole story, dude. It's it's really cool because uh, I, I think all the time about. Uh, nuking my life and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people listening to this <laughs> have had fantasies of nuking their lives and moving to a foreign country and um, you know it's cool to see that it it, it, it worked out for uh, for uh, Patty and um, what what's what's his wife's name again Dulcinea <laughs> Patty and Dulcinea and that uh, they were able to meet friendly and cool people Um Lola, is there anything that you want to say to uh, a bunch of people uh, on their computers right now before we all go? Um, yeah, I, I honestly didn't know about your show until my friend here talked to me, to me about it. They're like, no clue. Um, be nice to other people. Aww. That's most important. I love it. Patty, Daltonea, Lola, thank you guys for calling. Thank you so much, Lyle. Wow. And hey, Thank you. shout out to just fucking whatever. Beautiful. I mean, thanks for taking our call. It was like a dream. Yeah, and thanks, so man. We, me and Patty love your show. We listen to it all the time when we're stressed. It's just like it's zen to have it on. So thank you. Word. Hell yeah. Thank you guys very much, man. I'll talk to you guys soon. Okay, talk to you soon. I've, I, I've I've started bringing back talk to you soon. I'll end the calls with that sometimes, even though I will probably never talk to those people again. But it was great to talk to them for the amount of time that we did get to talk to them. I uh, I mean, let's dive into that call. I loved I loved that. That was great. I this I know I've said this about three times already. I'm going to say it again, but I do think all the time about like uh, you know what if I just left my life behind and went to a foreign country, and uh, it's awesome. Anytime you hear from people who did that and it worked out for them. I love the thing between uh, uh, Daltonea, I fucking hope I'm saying that right, and uh, Lola, where she just went on Instagram, did the the geolocation thing, found Lola, 
and they and now they're like good friends. This is that's the beautiful thing about the world we live in. I know that there's all the stuff about technology is evil and everybody's selling our you know data to people to get us to buy uh, selfie sticks and whatnot. But this is one of those situations in which uh, uh, technology has has created like a a, a, a beautiful real life friendship I love that I feel inspired by that call you know it's always it's it's great to get to talk to people who are who are living in other countries or who are from other countries uh you know broad, broaden our perspectives a little bit um I liked I liked I think I think if there was anything we we talked to those guys for a pretty long time I think if there was anything that I wanted to dive into that we didn't get a chance to dive into was like learning more about what Patty and Daltonea's life uh, was like in America and maybe why they they a little bit more about why they felt the need to leave or what they were unhappy with but yeah it was great talking to those guys.